Good Thursday morning. This is the Great Basin Fire Potential Briefing. This is meteorologist Basil Numerzitsky. Uh, we'll continue with these fire weather based briefings uh, through Friday, uh, given some of the recent fire activity, before we re uh, resume our smoke dispersion briefings on Mondays and Fridays, uh, scheduled to restart again next week. But in the meantime, we will take a look at our impacts, and uh, no significant impacts today. Um, in the text on the right-hand side, you can see we'll be looking at a significant warming and drying trend the next few days, especially for uh, southern portions of Nevada, Utah, and the Arizona Strip. However, those same areas will see showers and some thunderstorms with wetting rains and moving back into the area, uh, which are most uh, primed for fires. Uh, as we go into late Sunday and into early next week, uh, there'll be some more showers in northern areas as well. Precipitation the past 24 hours, fairly light. Uh, some light showers, a couple hundreds to maybe a quarter of an inch across parts of uh, Idaho and into western Wyoming. Uh, minimal lightning activity on the right-hand side of the screen. Looking at our recent precipitation, you can see that uh, in most northern areas, we've had significant rainfall the past seven days up in the uh, Reno, Carson City area where we had some of that uh, larger fire activity. We've also had rains here in the yellow, uh, one and a half to two inches of rain. So uh, areas that recently burned uh, landslide issues uh, starting to poke up through there. But you can see which areas have remained dry, not only in the past seven days, but also, actually, this is the past 14 days here on the right-hand side of the screen. Our ERCs, which do have a thousand-hour fuels as part of the equation, uh, show basically benign activity. But with our um, finer fuels, you can see the 10-hour fuels, especially here across southern Nevada and right along the Arizona-Utah border, um, quite dry in that 3 to 4 percent range. And our 100-hour fuels in this shade of orange through here across southern Utah, southern Nevada, and the Arizona Strip, also down into the uh, 6 to 10 percent range. So given the right conditions with winds and uh, dry humidity during the afternoon hours, it's conceivable to get uh, a fire moving in some of our southern areas. Our satellite imagery shows high pressure building in. There's uh, Pacific moisture streaming into the Pacific Northwest. But this high pressure ridge, which is building off the Southern California coast, will keep that moisture uh, focused to our north, mostly in Idaho and uh, points further north. Uh, this yellowish area is drier air mass humidity, so drier air with this high will start poking into uh, much of our area as we go through the next couple of days, starting with today. So we'll look at this afternoon. The upper level map on the left hand side of the screen shows high pressure building in with drier air, given by these tannish colors, uh, moving into a good portion of the southern Great Basin. Um, our significant fire potential, uh, some moderate uh, seen here in the south, and maybe some locally high uh, across the Mount Charleston area of southern Nevada. Looking at our winds and humidity for this afternoon on the right hand side, you see humidity down in the single digits to low teens across uh, Nevada and parts of the Arizona Strip and southern Utah. On the left hand side of the screen, though, winds fairly light. There'll be some southeast winds kicking in. The dark green indicates uh, um, wind speeds probably in the uh, uh, 12 to 20 mile an hour range, just in the mid 20s, where you see the orange uh, shades, otherwise fairly light winds. As we go into Friday, high pressure centered across the Great Basin should be a, a warm afternoon after a chilly morning. Uh, dry air pushing across most of the region. On the right hand side, you can see the southern third of our area remains dry and uh, under the right conditions could see a fire start grow um, if the winds are there. We'll look at those winds and you see they start picking up out of the south southwest across Nevada into parts of uh, far western Utah. Um, light across uh, far southern areas. On the right hand side, you see the humidity again, upper teens, uh, um, upper single digits to mid teens across Nevada and Utah, much higher though uh, to the north. And on Saturday, we see that um, high pressure starts to weaken the bulk of the dry air shifts to the east. We start seeing moisture pushing up from Mexico into southern Arizona um, and a trough full of pressure starting to approach by the tightening height lines indicates increasing winds on the right hand side. Uh, continuation of our significant fire potential with the driest conditions to our south. And then on Saturday, uh, you do see the wind starting to shift over into southwest Utah. 
um, continue across central and eastern portions of Nevada. And that's where humidity levels will be down in the teens. So we'll have to see if there's an ignition there that's not out of the realm to see a fire start. We've had some of that developing, uh, so we'll keep that in mind. Three-day precipitation, we stay dry during that time period. And then as we go further down the road on Sunday, notice now we start seeing moisture pushing in across southern Nevada um, and starting to approach Utah and coming up from the south. So that will bring, bring a change in our weather pattern. On Monday, we see that moisture in the green here expand across much of the area. So there will be showers around on the right-hand side. You see a lot of those yellows have turned green as showers start overspreading much of the region. And then going further down the road on Wednesday, we continue to see uh, clouds and showers into the green area here for much of our region. So our significant fire potential really takes a nosedive, and that trend will continue into Wednesday next week. Things really quiet down. We get into a more of an off-season format, which is why we'll go back to our smoke dispersion product starting next week. Uh, because the precipitation, those areas that are most critical, especially across the Arizona Strip in southern Utah, start green indicates a quarter to a half inch of rainfall with locally higher amounts. And uh, even down here in the Vegas area, maybe a tenth to a quarter of an inch of rainfall. Um, and areas across western Nevada, uh, which did have fire activity last week, did get one to three inches of rain. So they're pretty much put to bed as are our northern areas. Taking a quick peek at the 8 to 14 day outlook, a cooler than normal signal across central California indicates a storm track is going to shift from the Pacific Northwest down into central California. That's a winter type pattern, as is the above normal precipitation focus shifting to central and southern California into southern Nevada and into Utah. So our areas which are currently uh, driest in our southern areas we'll see the bulk of the precipitation as we go into the first uh, couple of days of November. So again, this concludes our fire uh, potential briefing. We'll have another one for tomorrow Friday, which will be the last one of the season before we shift back to our smoke dispersion briefing. Have a great day.